Hiya guys, just doing a little video today um, talking about gaff of uh, miners lamps. Um, I've got three gaff of lamps in front of me. I've got a, a Thomas & William G2 and I've got two uh, Protect uh, GR6S lamps. Um, this one here, it's got a magnetic lock. This one here, just got a, um, a lead rivet lock. But um, these were the um, latest developments in uh, flame safety lamps that came around in the late 60s. Um, my, my Thomas & Williams lamp is from 68. Uh, and these lamps are, well, this, this one here is the latest one, probably. It, this one's from 1999. And this one's from 1985. Um, but anyway, um, there was a guy called Sir William Garthus who um, he worked in the West Yorkshire coal field and he did a lot of research into uh, miners lamps, um, coal machinery, he, 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 coal dust explosions, he was quite an expert on stuff and in the 1880s he came up with the idea of how to um, inject um, a sample of air uh, using a, a rubber bulb like that into a miner's lamp uh, so that the uh, mine official could read the um, gas cap um, and, and work out how much air there was. Um, the idea is using something like this is that um, in the high up place like a ripping lip or a cavity or whatever you, you, you could put this bulb on the on the end of a deputy stick and get it up it, up in the eye places and, and, and get a sample of gas. It, there used to be a, a valve that would fit on here, so the, the guy had squeezed the bulb and the valve would keep the, the bulb squeezed in like that and then it, the the thing would be all be put on the end of the stick and then it'd be pushed up against the roof or there might be a bit of string on, on the lever of the valve and it'd, it'd lift up and then this bulb would um, expand like that with the air and then the uh, deputy would basically pull out the um, the plug there and it, it'd set a testing flame like that and then he'd put in the he'd put in the bulb in there and then he'd, he'd squeeze in the sample of air and it'd change the flame if there was any gas and he could he could tell from how high the flame was to how much gas there was in the atmosphere so that was basically what happened with um, Garfus um, I believe there was a, a, a miner's lamp from the 1880s that, that incorporated this principle, but um, I'm guessing it wasn't successful because it, it wasn't until the 60s when um, Wolf, uh, Thomas and Williams and Protector um, came out with these lamps. But I just thought I'd show you uh, today out the inside of one of these um, uh, Garfus plates on a protector lamp. So, I don't know if this has been mentioned before, but on the protector lamps, on the later lamps, it's got a flame snuffer on the wick so that um, if you if the lamp is lit like this and you unscrew the base, it'll put the flame out when uh, you unscrew the base. So I'll just show you how that works now. So, as the um, fuel cell has been unscrewed, the flame's just gone out there. So, that means that anyone that tries to unscrew a lamp underground, the flame will go out. So, that's a fuel cell there. But anyway, that's just something by the by. Right, so, what have we got inside a um, Garfield lamp here? Well, it's just like any other um, protectors that this um, sliding pillow slide down and then you can unscrew the top. You've got your bonnet. You've got your two gauzes, and you've got your glass, and you've got your glass ring there as well, where you wash yourself it, just there. So, in here, you've got your e lighter and your plate. So, I'm just going to get a screwdriver and unscrew this plate. So, it has three screws in it on this protector one. I'm just going to take these out now, and then we'll have a close look at this glass plate. So. 
the uh, Thomas and Williams and the uh, Wolf uh, lamp are slightly different, but um, this is just to give you a a bit of a knowledge of how that how it works. So, just take them screws out of there. So, when the um, to develop the uh, gas lamp. It started off as a GR6 and used to be a, a, a brass tube just like on the Type 6 lamp that had protruded from there and um, so it was called the GR6 lamp but they, they found in, in, in use at the coal mines that this, this brass tube that was coming out of here would split with the heat of the lamp so the way around it was to get rid of the brass tube that was in the, in the bottom of the lamp there and replaced it with a stainless steel tube which I'll show you in a minute when I take it to part. But that is where the GR6S came along because it was a GR6 lamp with a stainless steel tube, so the S is for stainless steel. Right, so this little glass plate here unscrews, so that um, that unscrews there, and there's a little rubber o ring there that should come off as well, and then this tube should just push out. So that comes out there. So this is the um, stainless steel tube. And there's a, a brass, uh, no, so, not a brass, sorry, a, a bronze uh, sintered ring there. And the thing about a, a sintered ring is that um, it acts as a filter and a flame retarder. So I'll tell you why that flame retarder works in a minute. Now, on this end of the uh, glass plate here, you've got this nut here, and we'll just take that nut off with a spanner. So, that just unscrews there. So, that unscrews, and then inside there, again, you've got a, a brass sintered ring on it. Like I was saying earlier, it's, class, it's a flame retarder. And why is it a flame retarder? Well, the deputy is going to inject a sample of potentially explosive gas into the lamp and it's going to go through that sintered ring there through that little hole that you can just see in the bottom there and then it's going to come out the bottom of this wick tube thing here the little hole in there, I don't know if you can just quite see it on the on the video but all the time that the, the flame could ignite the sample of gas that's from that little rubber bulb so that them two sintered brass rings stop the stops the flame from travelling back potentially out, out out of it into the atmosphere causing an explosion. So that's just the safety side of it. So that that's basically the, the gaff of principle principle there sorry is that um your, your rubber your, your, your rubber bulb there it, it just feeds the sample of gas directly into the flame so that the deputy or the mine official can take a gas reading. And uh, so that is how the Garforth lamp works. The mine officials had to learn these uh, flame shapes. And um, so you've got two lots here. You've got one for flat wicks, because some of the older lamps had flat wicks. And the uh, protector lamps were, was um, round wicks. So you'd have to learn these in a dark room with a, a, a working miner's lamp. And they're the different, type, uh, different sizes of... Um, gas caps as they call them that that's a, that's a flame on top of the wick in the lamp so they have to, have to learn them at different percentages of methane so i do know if, uh, that one and a quarter percent you would uh, turn off electricity if you if you came across that in a in a coal mine and at two percent you withdraw your workmen to a safe place where you know that the air is good and there's no no risk of explosion there but but anyway that that is just how um, a gaffer flamp works and um, a quick talk throughout how the principle of it works so thank you for watching and um, we'll see you again soon thank you very much bye for now